Hello, NanoDano at devdungeon.com here, and I want to show you what I know about setting up cron jobs in Linux. Cron jobs are useful for scheduling commands to run periodically, for example, every 15 minutes, once per month, or once per day. I will show you several common tasks that I use with cron, including common scheduling examples, chaining together multiple programs, redirecting output, how to check the logs, and how to run a Python script from a virtual environment. Cron is good for programs that run and then complete, like generating a report. But Cron is not for services that stay running forever, for example, a web server. If you want to have a program that continuously runs and you want to ensure that program stays running, even if it crashes or the server restarts, you want to set up a service. You can check out my tutorial on creating systemd service files and see how to do that. Cron, if you want to use it, is available in Linux and Mac, but not in Windows. If you want to view the written version of the same content covered in this video, visit devdungeon.com slash content slash cron job examples and tip. Let's look at how to view and edit existing cron jobs. This will let you see if there are any jobs already set up and you can edit or even add new ones here. You can use crontab-e to edit cron jobs. Note that each user has their own crontab, so if you run it with sudo, you're editing the root user's crontab. If you use it without sudo, you're using your, your user that you're signed in as. If you get the prompt like I did about choosing an editor, choose whichever you are comfortable with. Nano is the easiest if you are starting out. Only use VI if you already know it. For example, if I run crontab-e as my nano dano user, I will be editing my personal crontab and any program that runs via this cron will have my user's permissions. If I run sudo crontab-e, I will be running crontab as root and I will be editing the root user's cron tab, and any program running via this cron will have root privileges. It is important to be aware of this and do not execute scripts with higher privileges than are needed. It is good to use a system user with low privileges, and you can view my tutorial for creating Linux system users at this link, and you can also read the description. You can also specify which user you want to edit using sudo crontab. You can add the dash u username to specify which crontab to edit. This is useful if you want to edit a system user's crontab. Cron jobs that are scheduled with crontab dash e are stored in slash ver slash spool slash cron where you can view them there, but you should never modify them directly. Always use crontab-e to edit. You can also add cron jobs into the etc slash cron directories, but personally I prefer the crontab-e method. So far we've only looked at how to open the cron tab for editing. Now let's look at what you would actually type into the editor, how to create an actual cron job. I have a few examples here already. Now let's look deeper at each one and the format for the entry. A cron tab entry has a very specific format where the first five columns represent the schedule and the rest of the line at the end on the right side is the command. So you'll see lots of stars and numbers on the left side and a command always on the right. You can use spaces or tabs to format a line, it doesn't matter. And if you want to leave a comment, you can start the line with the pound or the hash sign. The five columns in a cron entry represent the minute, hour, day of month, day of week. And then there's the command at the end. The day of the month is a number from 1 to 31, depending on the month. And the day of the week is a numerical value from 0 to 6, with Sunday being 0 and Saturday being 6. The first example I have here runs every minute. You see it just has five stars all across the board. This basically means run every minute of every hour of every day on every day of the month on every day of the week. 
the command simply prints the word hi into a file in the root users directory. So it doesn't do anything fancy, but it's just a demonstration of how to run something every minute, which is the fastest you can run a cron job is every minute. The next example runs every 15 minutes. It's almost exactly the same as the one previous, but in the minutes column on the far left, you see we add a slash 15 to the star. So this means run every 15 minutes. If you wanted to run it every 30 minutes, you could write slash 30 instead of slash 15 there. This example runs nightly at 1.30 a.m., 1.30 in the morning. The minutes column has no star and just the number 30. The hours column has a 1, so that means 1.30 in the morning. Every other column has a star, so it means run this every day of the week, no matter what day of the week it is, what day of the month it is, and this will run at this time. This next example runs every Sunday at 4.30 a.m. The minute column has 30, the hour column has 4, similar to the previous example. The difference with this one is that we only want it to run on a specific day of the week, that is Sunday, so the last column is 0, which is the representative for Sunday at the beginning of the week. The next example runs on the first day of the month at 2.15 a.m. The minute column is 15, the hour column is 2. That's how we get 2.15 a.m. The day of the month is column that is 1, since we want it to run on the first day of every month. This next example shows you how you can run a Python script from a virtual environment in a cron entry. Normally, with a Python virtual environment, you activate it in your shell, your shell session, but that isn't necessary. If you invoke the Python interpreter from a virtual environment using its full path, it will run with the proper import directories for that virtual environment, as if you had that virtual environment activated. The alternative is to write a bash shell script and put all of the commands into that that you want to execute together. This example shows you how you can pass environment variables to a program. Just include the environment variable name with an equal sign and set the value. Do this before running the script on the same line. Make sure there are no spaces between the equal signs and you can use quotation marks if there are spaces in your values. The next example shows you how you can chain together multiple commands. You use the double ampersand to create an AND condition, and you put those double ampersands between each of the commands that you want to execute. If you do it this way, it will stop executing commands if one of the commands fails, that is, returns a non-zero value. Otherwise, they'll only run all the way through if all of the commands are successful. If you want them to run regardless of failure, you can use two pipe symbols which will create the OR condition instead of the AND condition. This final example I'm going to show you is an example of redirecting output. You can redirect output to a file, or in this case, a device like dev null. They're treated exactly the same. The two angle bracket ampersand one at the end of the line means take the output stream that is standard error, which is file descriptor two, and redirect it to standard output, file descriptor one. So it merges standard error into standard output. So then you can just redirect standard output and you're, you're getting both of them together. So in the end, the command will redirect all standard error and standard output to the device you specified here, in this case, dev null. All this is gonna do is completely discard any output from standard out or standard error. And this is useful if you don't want any output and you want to make sure there's no log files or anything. Though a program could still directly write a log file if it does that. I know that was a lot of examples in quick succession, but hopefully you have a good idea of what's possible now. This was really a guide to give you an idea of some basics and some really common use cases. Both cron and the shell are incredibly mature, so there are a lot of possibilities I did not cover, and I encourage you to read further into both the cron and the shell, the bash shell or the original shell. I recommend bookmarking the page on Dev Dungeon or keeping your own version for reference. I've got a few tips for using cron in no particular order. Um, I recommend using the lowest privilege user possible. Avoid using the root user if you don't need to. 
use full paths to files and executables. This isn't a requirement, but I generally recommend it for clarity. If you have complex jobs, put them into a shell script. Don't try and write a super complicated one line shell script just to try and fit it on a cron line. Put it into a script and then just call that script from your cron job. You'll also want to make sure your script is executable, so give it a plus x. And if you have any values that have spaces, like if you're trying to write to a file that has spaces, use quotation marks to encapsulate that. And I recommend checking out crontab.guru as a website. It has lots of examples of different, different scheduling for cron jobs. When it comes to checking logs, there's a couple places it can be. It's going to be dependent on how your system is set up, but there's typically two places I would start looking. One is in the slash var slash log directory, slash var slash log slash cron, and you can edit that file, view it, tail it, less, more, cat, something like that. The other one is if you have a system D distribution that uses systemd to manage the processes, then you can use journal ctl u cron, and that will show you the logs for cron. Sometimes also systems will mail you the output from cron, and that goes to your system, like your Unix user account on the system. So sometimes that goes to the root user, sometimes it'll go to multiple places at once, it'll depend on how your system is set up. For example, on a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian, I think cron logging is completely disabled by default, and I think they do this to save disk space. But just be aware that all systems can be different in how they have their logging set up. If you'd like to support me, you can check out some of these services like apora.net, which will notify you if your website goes down, kathy.devdungeon.com, a Discord AI chatbot, I have a book called Security with Go about the Go programming language and cybersecurity. There's a Discord server. You can come join and hang out and chat, devdungeon.com slash discord. And if you want to check out some of my music I'm putting together, it's at electropunk.net, and you can find me as electropunk0.